Welcome back, ladies and gents. Today we're going to be recapping the Chinese mystery anime Uncharted Walker. The show is about a group of people who are trapped on a desolate island surrounded by tribes, mutant viruses, and countless life and death situations. The series starts with the MC drowning. Apparently, he's been having that nightmare for multiple nights as he drifts away into the void of his head. A voice calling him awakens the man, and to his surprise, He's locked in a cell. A girl talks to him through, uh, sorry for a lack of a better description here, through a glory hole. Uh, if you know, you know, right? The girl alerts him to a wall of spikes closing in on him slowly. If you're claustrophobic, good luck inserting yourself in that scene. Being afraid, he goes off at the girl, accusing her that she's the one who put him there. But he soon learns that she's in the same situation, so he swiftly starts to think about ways to escape. After noticing the girl has an axe with her and she has no window in her room, he concludes that he can destroy the wooden window in his cell using the big booba's axe. And after he promises he won't leave her behind, the plan is set in motion. However, they soon learn that the hole is too small for the thick axe to pass through, hence the girl tries to widen the hole but to no avail, as it's made from granite. Now hopeless, the girl cries her heart out, but a based Sigma Ning tells her to shut the F up. Oh yeah, the main character's name is Ning, and currently he can't think clearly with all the crying. The girl can't believe that she'll die soon, even before having her first kiss, to which he responds, it's easy, just approach the glory hole. I mean, I might have paraphrased that a little bit. Anyway, Ning asks the girl how she ended up in this place, and she tells him that she fell asleep on a train, and the next thing she found was waking up in that cell next to the metal bed. A joy sparks in Ning's heart as he now has a way out. By using a metal rod from the bed, he manages to break his window, setting himself free, while Su, aka the booba, is glued to the wall, crying for his help as the spikes get closer to her. A perfectly timed flashback shows Su's past, how she got left behind on a mountain for wanting to stick with a guy who got injured, who in turn also left her, not wanting to be his girlfriend. In a normal situation, I mean, I would blame the guy, but after the way she turned him, I can empathize with him. It does sting. However, does it sting to the point of leaving a chick who stayed behind to help oneself? I mean, I ask myself that as I'm writing this script, you know. Anyway, let's get back on track. With this event, it was apparent she suffers from trust issues. Hence, she gets shocked when Ning comes back to rescue her. And after they break from the cell, he looks around him and realizes they're on an island. The couple are imprisoned in a lighthouse. While going down a ladder, Ning notices it's broken, and the only way down is to jump to the other half, which he successfully does. Then a hesitant Sue jumps, landing in his arms, but the ladder breaks due to the mass of them titties. While falling, Ning uses his body as a human shield to protect Sue, who in turn saves him from drowning and carries him to a room on the lower floors of the lighthouse. Inside, Sue finds a dead body and encounters a budget cut Gilgamesh who threatens her with his trusty butterfly knife, demanding to answer his questions since he suspects that she's the person behind the kidnapping. She tells him her identity and pleads to him that he could let her tend to the unconscious Ning. The pretty boy smiles and says he'll question him to see if she's saying the truth about herself, so he steps on this poor guy's hand, waking him in a state of shock. When the blondie asks Ning if he knows the booba, he replies that he's never seen that thought before. I mean, that's savage, I know, right? However, this wasn't a joke. Turns out our boy suffers from amnesia caused by that nasty fall. But the gangster isn't convinced yet, so he demands the chick explain in one word why the guy risked his life to save her, excluding love from first sight, as our tough boy here doesn't even believe in that crap. After thinking hard, the girl pulls a reverse Uno card, asking the guy for how long he knew his oldest friend, to which he answered by saying 22 years, and through some pseudo logic that fried my brain to the point I gave up on reading the subtitles, she convinces him, leading Ning to be set free. After collecting themselves, we see Su trying to make Ning remember the recent events that had happened, but to no avail, as the last thing he remembers is him standing in the corner reading the Playboy in the fifth grade, to which the blondie compliments. Soon after the group's attention diverts to the corpse, the chicks started analysing it. They laid the corpse on the ground and tore its shirt off to investigate further. With nothing to do, Sue asks the thug who he is. Gilgamesh responds that he works for an eastern gang and his name is Chiang, and he expects that a smuggler by the name of Ming took and left them there, to which Ning explains that it's not the case and they're in some sort of game, indicating that our boy is starting to come to his senses a little bit by now. Well, either that or he's bloody smart for a fifth grader. After such claims, they notice a piece of paper in the mummy's ear. It's a map that Ning remarks he vaguely knows or remembers, which consequently makes Chi Young demand answers, but in the hazy phase, 
and Ning can't deliver answers. So Big Sis Sue takes him away and calmly asks him about the map, but he can't remember and eventually passes out in her arms. The next day comes and Chin Yang wakes up the couple and informs them that they're going to the X marked point on the map and remarks that he still doesn't trust them and proceeds to appoint himself as the leader of the group. After finding a man-made trap in the woods, he tells them to start gathering all the essentials they need to camp for the night and they'll be taking half of the food and water as their newly appointed leader. At night while having dinner, well it was more like Chi Young having dinner, he looks at Sue in that most rapey way, charmed by her voluptuous body, he orders her to make his bed in the cave, then tells Ning to eat up and whatever happens to not enter the cave or he'll kill him. Surely the predictable happened and Sue started screaming. Outside Ning is having a crisis, should he go in or should he stay out? So he decides to go in interrupting the Alpha, despite the kicks that Stigma gets, he holds his ground and says he can't leave and that they're a team explaining each member's vital role through game mechanics, which leads Ning to personally get acquainted with the Alpha's fist before he leaves the cave. Always try to outsmart your enemies through weeb languages they don't understand. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, Tian contemplates on Ning's words about being a team and whatnot and concludes that they can't be the men of his enemy. Then suddenly, he hears a man shouting for help, so he sprints back to the camp and after finding the couple safe, they rush towards the trap location and watch carefully as the events unfold. At some point, the girl tries to warn the man being chased about the trap ahead, but she gets silenced by Ning who explains, the one who is after that running man hasn't appeared yet and it means he's being chased by a very, very dangerous fella, which evidently turns out to be the case. So the group watches as the tribesman kills the 70s porn star looking guy. After the man leaves, the team gets back to the camp and Chin Young stays up for the night to guard the place. The next day comes and the couple is collecting coconuts. A rat sneaks behind Sue's feet scaring the booba off her. Chin Young comes running thinking they're being attacked by the cannibal and when he sees it isn't the case, he scolds the girl as her shouting might bring some unwanted attention. Then Ning remarks that he came fast to protect them, making him blush. Chi Young tries to brush that off by saying he was taking a piss nearby, which in turn makes the busty babe want to go to the bathroom, especially after that deadly encounter with the rat. While answering the call of nature, she gets jumped by two tribesmen. They hold her on the ground in a rather sus position, meaning the guys are trying to come up with a plan fast to save her, but seeing that her head will be a mashed potato soon, they decide to go out all guns blazing as Ning runs down to tackle the guy from behind and Chi Young aims for the other guy. A shot was fired, sending the hammer guy to the ground and making the other guy run away. Sue hugs Ning, but their happy reunion was cut short by a busty blonde who introduces herself as a member of the LAPD, Tracy Candy, which let me tell you is the most generic American porn star name that I have ever heard. Tracy tells the team that they need to move out as the location isn't safe anymore and that there's another group of people they can join. Chi Young can't fully trust Tracy though since she looks familiar and he lets her know that but she brushes it off by saying that there are a lot of people who look like her. Their convo gets cut short by the tribesman who brought more numbers with him and arrows to the fight, so Tracy stays back to cover the team and tells them about a safe point where they can wait for her. At that point, Chi Young instructs the team that they should never speak about the map and code that they found since they can't trust anyone except themselves and he offers that by obeying him, he'll do whatever he can to protect them. The Booba is hesitant to take the offer. I mean, how can you blame her after that quote unquote accident in the cave? That she leaves the decision to Ning, who agrees to the offer. With it, Chi Young makes a somewhat epic oath under the guise of Guan, who's the god of war and the god gangsters in Chinese folklore. And after they finish it, Tracy, who's still alive and 100% sexy, arrives. She tells them, with not much ammo left, the best chance for survival is to go and join the other group to which the team agrees. Now, if you're still interested and want to know what happens next, you can look up Uncharted Walker and continue watching from the third and half episode where the groups meet. But before you do that, don't forget to drop a like and a comment. It helps keep the moral high, you know. <laughs> Till next time, fellas.